All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I'm in one of the most beautiful cars ever made. It's this 2015 Maserati 4 Porte. Apologies, I can't not say it like that. It's almost an illness. What's interesting about this one is rather than being ruinously expensive to run, as you'd expect from a Maserati, this will do 40 miles per gallon. Why, I hear you ask? Well, under the bonnet, there isn't a big snarling thirsty V8. It's actually a smaller V6, which in fact doesn't use a single drop of petrol at all. It's diesel. Purists will turn their nose up at this, but I actually think it represents the best of both worlds. You see, you've got a beautiful rare Maserati with the running cost of a 5 Series BMW. Surely that's a no-brainer. Have I uncovered a gem here, or is this all style over substance? Well, let's find out, shall we? I borrowed this stunning Maserati from AMD Automotive in Cheshire, so below in the video description I'll leave a link to their website so you can have a look at the stock for yourself. Anyway, back to the car. Look how sexy it is. I've just stopped for some fuel and then I walked back to the car after paying and I thought to myself, that is just achingly pretty. The more you look at it, the more you appreciate it. It's just got so much presence. It's elegant and sophisticated and it just makes me want to move to Italy immediately. The Quattroporte has the ability to make even non-car people drool. How can you make a saloon car this pretty? I've always insisted that the X308 XGL, like the one I had, was the prettiest saloon car ever made. But now this has made me question everything I thought I knew. Stepping inside the Quattroporte, which literally means four-door in Italian, by the way, can you imagine Rover making a car called the four-door? I would rip them relentlessly. Anyway, stepping inside the Quattroporte, initially you'll be very impressed. It's every bit as stylish as the outside, but then you'll start to poke and prod around, and it all feels a little... A little cheap. Take for example the gaps around the interior panels. It all looks as though it's been done on a Friday afternoon, doesn't it? They've done quite a nice job of disguising all the bits and pieces, but if you're a car nerd, like I am, you'll recognise lots of parts from Fiat and Jeep. I mean, to be fair, that's just how car makers work these days, isn't it? I was in an Aston Martin DBS the other day and I recognised the mirror switches from a Volvo, which are the same as the mirror switches from a Freelander. I recognised the cover from the 12 volt socket from a Mark VI Fiesta. You've just got to ignore all that sort of stuff. Because in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, does it? I love the look of the seats, and I love the subtle chrome that they've used everywhere, and I love the clock. But you'll recognise the window switches, the light switch, the engine start-stop button, all from cheaper Fiat Jeep products. Some of the buttons and switches and levers feel a bit clumsy. They feel more American than Italian. But again, it hasn't knocked the cheesy grin off my face. I'm in a Maserati. And it does somehow all come together and work. It is genuinely a nice place to be. You're constantly reminded that you're in a Maserati because everywhere you look, and I mean everywhere, you'll see the Maserati emblem. On the steering wheel, on the gauge clusters, on the pedals, on the headrests, on the sat-nav, on the clock, everywhere. Still, I'm not complaining, even though that might have sounded like a criticism. It wasn't, just an observation. This next comment will no doubt make me sound shallow, but I think it has to be said. This is one of those cars that just makes you feel makes you feel cool and suave and urbane. Before I got in this car, I wondered if the infotainment system would be from the Victorian era, like the one used in the Gran Turismo, but I'm happy to report it isn't. It's actually quite good. It's all touchscreen, which I'm not usually a fan of, but it is quite quick to respond, and the quality and the clarity of the display is up there. You get sat-nav, heated seats, Bluetooth media streaming, digital radio, everything you could possibly wish for. You also get a reverse camera, but I think the less I tell you about that, the better. The overall interior space is pretty good as well. There's plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom, plenty of elbow room. Visibility is pretty good, even though the rear window is quite shallow. Moving back to the rear, there's much more space than I was expecting. There's way more legroom than I thought there'd be. Although if you're over six foot two, you might struggle with headroom. Moving back further still, the boots also a very good size. You'll easily fit a couple of pieces of luggage back there, but once again, it does feel a little bit cheap on the finishing touches. The carpet, for example, looks like something you'd find in a council office. Still, nobody's going to really see that, are they? A few weeks ago, I was looking at buying a diesel car. Now, don't call me a hypocrite because I always bash diesels. I'm not a big fan, but I'm doing more and more miles to go and borrow cars, to film with and all that sort of stuff. So I thought I should probably get a diesel. I was looking at BMW 5 Series and 6 Series and Mercedes CLSs, all that sort of stuff. And I hadn't considered one of these. But now I've driven this, I genuinely would. Its looks and its rarity would seriously tempt me. In terms of what it's like to drive, then don't get excited. It's just, it's all right, it's fine, it's nice. It's not great. 
I'm afraid to say it's a little underwhelming. Something like a 530 diesel is just much more engaging. But they're everywhere, and the Quattroporti isn't. This is rare and beautiful. Again, it is a little bit style over substance though, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with the Quattroporti. I just know that the steering isn't as sharp as a BMW and the ride isn't as good as a Mercedes. This three litre turbo diesel V6 is made by a company called VM Motori and they've been making diesel engines for years. And they do a pretty good job. This particular one produces 271 horsepower, which means it's capable of doing naught to 60 in just over six seconds. So it does genuinely feel quite brisk. And it only costs 220 pounds a year to tax. It'll do 32, 33 miles per gallon round town and 50 on a motorway run. So like I said at the start of this video, you've got a Maserati here, which will average 40 miles per gallon. It's impressive. If you don't fancy the diesel, you could go for a V6 or V8 petrol, but your MPG will halve. As much as I always say you're better off going for the petrol because you won't have DPF issues, you're less likely to get injector issues, all that sort of stuff. If you do 15,000 miles a year or more, then you're still better off going for the diesel. Saying that, the V8 sounds so good. I don't know. Horses for courses, isn't it? This diesel is better than I thought it'd be. It's a little bit gruff from cold, as all diesels are, but give it a couple of minutes and it is silky smooth. And the car's quite well insulated, so you can't really hear that you've got an oil burner under the bonnet. What's most impressive about this, though, is its overtaking ability. I'm currently sat here at 40 miles an hour, and if I sting it, you are pinned into your seat, and then all of a sudden I'm doing, yes, in excess of the speed limit. The engine's mated to an automatic gearbox. It's an eight-speed unit from ZF, and it does a really good job. It's quick to respond, and the changes are seamless and smooth. I also quite like the gear selector. It's a nice ergonomic design. Having said that, it is a little bit like an Audi A8 in that sometimes when you're in reverse, you actually get park. Still, I think you'll get used to it. Here in the UK, although they're rare, you can pick these up quite cheaply. You can pick up early examples of this sixth generation Quattroporte, which was released in 2013, for around £20,000. It's such a lot of car for 20 grand. I've been comparing this all day to a 5 Series because on the used market they're very similarly priced, but when new the Quattroporte cost as much as a 7 Series or Audi A8. When they were new I don't think it represented great value for money, but now that they're used and they've depreciated, it definitely does. On the downside it'll cost you more to service at Maserati than BMW or Audi, but I can't see it being any less reliable. I mean 5 Series and A6s and E-Classes will throw up a big bill every now and then, but I guess that's the price you pay for wanting something a bit more special. Reliability-wise, you'll always have detractors who'll say things like, oh, I wouldn't touch one of those with a bloody barge pole. But that's just because they've got no balls whatsoever, so they'll never take any risks and buy something like this. Slagging off something they know absolutely nothing about just seems to make them feel better about their own lack of bravery and risk-taking. Fortunately, I have the opposite view. I think if you want something, go for it. Make it happen. Get off your backside and go and get it. You can spend your whole life being frightened of your own shadow, saying things like, well, what if the engine breaks? What if the gearbox breaks? What if the... Well, you're right, what if? What if your plane crashes? What if you get hit by a bus crossing the road? What if you get cancer? We're here once, folks, so make most of it. If you want a nice car because it's pretty or it makes you feel special, then go and get it. We're here for a good time, not a long time. So if you want my advice, I'd ignore people who drive Citroen Zara Picassos and think it's acceptable to wear socks with sandals. They just don't understand. If you think about it pragmatically, the three litre diesel engine is used in a Jeep Grand Cherokee, so it's not the most exotic thing ever. The gearbox is made by ZF, who make gearboxes for loads of other cars on the road, probably ones that I've passed today. So I really can't see anything to be frightened of. I think the only problem you might face is finding second-hand parts. If, for example, you need a wing mirror or a sun visor or a, I was gonna say parcel shelf, but I don't think it has one, that kind of thing. There won't be a million of these on eBay, so you might struggle to get hold of used parts, but still, it's a limited production run car. It's to be expected. It isn't a Golf or a CRV or a Igo. Every time you see it on your driveway or you walk back to it from a supermarket or you catch reflection in a shop window, I just don't think you'll have any regrets whatsoever. In fact, I think you'll have a wry smile on your face. It's quite an achievement. Yes, some of the buttons and switches are a bit cheap and the ride is a little bit on the harsh side, but it's a Maserati and it just makes you feel good about yourself. So to answer the question that I asked at the start, is this just style over substance? I think it is, to be honest, yes. But that's not always such a bad thing. Let me put it another way. On the back seat there is a coat that I've just bought. It was quite expensive, and as a coat, it's a bit useless. It doesn't keep me warm at all. But it makes me feel smart, and it makes me feel suave, and it makes me feel good about myself. 
we're just human beings. Sometimes our decisions don't make sense and that's all right. We don't have to be sensible all the time. Well, I think that's about it. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below. I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.